as the retain includes the design of counterfort retaining walls, either supporting on ground or supported on piles. But how do you actually design these kind of walls, particularly if you design it using a software like uh, as the retain? How do you define the geometry? How do you enter the loads? How do you check the results? How do you optimize the design? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a counter for retaining wall supported on piles. Let's get started. As an example, consider this retaining wall shown in the image, which is 25 feet high. The wall is supported on piles. For this stem height, it's better to use a counter for type of retaining wall rather than a cantilever. So this is the solution we're going to implement today. The wall is retaining a level backfill. The properties is density 115 PCF and the internal friction angle is 30 degrees. F prime C4 and FY 60 KSI. The soil report has recommended the use of 12 inch round concrete piles. The allowable compression is 120 kips. Allowable tension is 60 kips and the allowable lateral is 10 kips per pile. With this information, we need to design this counter for retaining wall. We need to find the dimensions, the thickness, the piles, and also the reinforcement of this retaining wall. Let's get started. When you open as the retain, you see the project manager. Here we can see the modules included in the package, cantilever retaining walls, counter for retaining walls, basement retaining walls, and sheet piling. This time we're going to design a counter for retaining wall. So let's create a calculation. Let's call it example. Add. And the calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on the tree. And this is a template for a counter for retaining wall design in ASDIP Retain. Let's focus first on the information that was given in the statement of the problem. We know that the stem height is 25 feet. Let's input that. The stem thickness, let's assume 10 inches for now. Let's go to the counter forts. Typical spacing between counter forts is between 8 to 12 feet. Let's say that is 10 feet for this example. Counter for thickness, 12 inches is okay. The top length, let's say that is one foot at the top of the wall. The rule of thumb is that the bottom length is about 0.4 the height of the counter fort. So in this case, it's 0.4 times 25 is 10 feet. If we go to the graph tab, we can see graphically what we are doing. The counter fort is one at the top, 10 at the bottom, and the heel length is 12 feet. Let's go to the footing tab. The wall is supported on piles, so let's check this checkbox. This is a pile cap, so we need a more thickness here, probably 40 inches. The toe length will be defined by the loads on the piles. So for now, let's leave it as, as four feet. We go to the piles tab, round piles, 12 inch diameter. The embedment is six inches in the pile cap. Let's say that the batter pile, if necessary, will be 15 degrees. The edge distance for each pile is one foot and a half for the tall toe side and also for the heel side. Let's say that the pile spacing is three feet for the uh, toe side and uh, six feet for the heel side. If necessary, we can change these dimensions later. The backfill. The backfill height should be 25 feet. And the slope, zero. We have entered all the information given in the statement of the problem, except with the materials. Let's go to the materials tab. F prime C4 and FY60. The footing, same, 4 and 60. We go to the piles tab. Here the compression allowable capacity is 120 kips, given in the statement of the problem. For tension, 60 kips. And for lateral, 10 kips. So now we have all the information in the statement of the problem. We can start optimizing the design. Go to the at a glance tab. Here we can see uh, several deficiencies, here in the pile foundation and also in the shear 
capacity and also in the reinforcement design. The main problem with this pile foundation is the lateral capacity. Obviously, we need to batter some piles. If we go to the graph tab, all the piles are vertical, so the lateral capacity is very limited. So we need to batter the front piles, the tow piles. We go to the geometry tab, piles tab. Here the batter pile angle is 15 degrees. We need to check this checkbox to indicate that the, the piles at the tow side will be battered, like that. Let's check the effect of this change. It's still short, but it's, it's very close. We go to the graph tab, so we are about 6% over in the horizontal capacity. Let's go to the let's go to the footing tab. Let's change this dimension of the toe to three feet to see if that helps. It's now three percent over. Basically, we need to assign more vertical load to this pile. The more load the pile has, the more lateral capacity it has as well. So with three feet of the toe is not enough. Let's reduce it even more to two feet. Now it's, it's, now it's passing. So the pile foundation issues are fixed. Now, can, now we can focus on the shear forces. The stem is very well optimized, uh, same as counterfort. The footing is over by 7%, so we need to increase a little bit more the footing thickness, let's say 42. It's still over by 2%, so let's go to 44 inches. Now it's okay, it's passing. The punching shear is okay. Now in the reinforcement area, in the stem, the moment capacity ratio is too low, so we can improve this number. Let's go to reinforcement, then stem. Instead of number sixes, let's use number fours everywhere. Also in the backfield side, so each side, number four at 12. And the moment capacity ratio is 0.81, so it's well optimized and everything else is passing. In the counter fourth, the moment, the moment capacity ratio, 0 0.74, is okay, but the vertical, the vertical tension ratio is over by 11%, so we need to increase the vertical uh, stirrups in the counter four. The vertical stirrups, instead of number four, let's say number five. And now it's passing. In the footing, uh, the moment capacity ratio is 0.60, meaning that we can improve it a little bit. Instead of 8 at 6, let's say 8 at 9, each side, each way. Now it's 0.89. So now it's very well optimized. As you can see, everything is passing now. In the pile foundation is passing also in the shear forces, so the thicknesses are okay, and they're in the reinforcement, so the rebars are okay. Go to the condensed tab. You can see here a detailed set of calculations uh, grouped by topic, foundation area, overturning, here the stem design, the counter for design, everything is passing. Here the pile cap design, And we go to the detail tab. Here's a more detailed set of calculations, step by step. Also with uh, references to the ACI code and with exposed formulas. So you can follow all these calculations in a granular way. Stem design, everything is passing. Counter for design, all the calculations per ACI, all the references are here. Pile cap design. 
And finally, let's go to the graph tab. This is stability tab showing the piles forces for the controlling load combination, which is this one here. Also the ratios, very well optimized. Go to the stem tab, the controlling load combination, which is this. The footing tab showing in plan view the pile cap with the counter force and also the pile layout at the toe side and uh, at the heel side. In elevation view with the uh, shear diagram and the moment diagram for the pile cap for the controlling load combination which is this one here. And finally the construction tab showing the final design with all the rebars that you just designed. As you can see, it's easy to design a counterfort retaining wall uh, supported on piles using ASDIP Retain. We were able to complete the design in, in, in just a few minutes that otherwise would take hours if we can do it by, by hand. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.